Highland Shorts, Ivy. Oh no, Ivy's a parasite. It's doing damage to all these trees and we should cut it off. Well, that is a load of old Jackson Pollocks. Ivy is not a parasite, it is a commensal. Basically, it uses the tree up which it grows as support. So it gets a free ride off from the woodland floor, up into the light where it can photosynthesize. And you can see how it does this on this stem here. It wraps around, and cradles itself. This is now on there really firm. And it also adheres to the bark using these adventitious roots. And you can see them here. I'll move the camera in and out. Adventitious roots are just roots which grow directly from a stem rather than in a separate root system. And there's basically lots and lots and lots of them and they attach it to the bark. And you can see from where this came from, you hear it, you could hear it pull away, so it's quite firmly attached. But the adventitious roots do not penetrate the tree, and the ivy doesn't derive any nutrient from the tree at all. And you can see here, just in passing, that this stem has died away, but the original stem here is still alive. It goes all the way up here. It's attached itself here. It's attached there. These were parts of the same plant. This is called autografting. It's grafted itself to itself. So, why do I like ivy? I really do like ivy. Ivy's good stuff. Because of this. We're here in January now. And these are the fruits of the ivy. Flowering is just about finished for the year. That's the flower. Which is just starting to develop the fruits. These are the fruits, unripe. Fruits will ripen off, off through March. And they're very, very rich in fats. So they're good birds and small mammals. I've seen mouse nests full of ivy berries, the blue ones which are ripe, and the pollen of course is one of the very last pollens. So if you're say a white-tailed bumblebee and you're out on a warm day in the winter, you come out a little bit too early from hibernation, you've got a chance of actually getting some pollen. Ivy only fruits above the ground doesn't fruit on the ground. You see there's lots and lots and lots of ivy here. But there's all different species growing through it. It's a bit of a pain in the, uh, the boy bits when you're a coppice worker because all my timber which I've cut a lot of it's had to have the ivy stems taken off it but you can see when it's up in the trees if you look up in here the ivy grows up but is suppressed by a healthy canopy above it. It tends to do most of its photosynthesis in the winter, when the leaves are off the trees. Then in the summer, it goes along much more slowly when it's under the shade and tends not to grow very fast. And if you look through here, you see the same story all the way through. The ivy tends to stay underneath a healthy canopy. But if you look down to these trees on the edge of the woodland, hopefully you can see these old trees on the edge, which are getting right towards the end of their, their natural life, a lot of these are hawthorns. The ivy is getting much bigger. Yeah, this can be the, uh, the last straw that breaks the camel's back. Get a nice high wind, leaves are off the tree. One of the reasons that deciduous trees shed their leaves is to reduce, reduce the risk of wind throw in the winter when the ground is wet. And strong winds tend to come in from the southwest in this part of the, part of the world. 
But if you've got a big sail of ivy up in your canopy and you're already starting to die off at the base, you're going to come down. Just in passing, got another short that looks at thistles. This is another thistle, this is a musk thistle. The other one I think was a marsh thistle. Another big plant with a lovely flowering head and a very good nectar source for a whole range of, of insects. Ivy. Oh yes, while we're here, you can see the ivy in this area. It's very, very thick indeed. It does tend to suppress other ground flora from growing up through it. But it doesn't suppress stuff like this and this is an ash seedling there are a lot of ash seedlings all through here and over here this will turn out to be cuckoo pint or pint I call it pint because that's what my grandfather used to say and he was from Kent and this also called um, Aerum maculatum so spotted Aerum or lords and ladies so that's ground flora growing through, natural generation growing through, but the ivy is very, very thick and it's multi-layered. It's nice and warm and nice and moist down in there. And you've got lots of different insects, especially in the summer, and also creatures that feed on them. There's slow worms in this wood. Slow worms will hunt all the way through there, undercover, nice and warm. In the winter, especially where it runs up against the base of a, a stool, it tend, tends to be very thick and sheltered out of the wind, out of some of the wet. Nice and uh, possible place where you can get in amongst the, the stool edge and hibernate. And I've seen sites that look like this with a bit more uh, openness that are full of common lizards, which again grow all the way through here run about in the multi-layered ivy and eat all the nice things which are actually found in there along with them. So ivy, not a parasite and not necessarily a bad thing at all. Thank you very much.